The Eye in the Waste. There lie seven deserts beyond Bodrahan, which is the city of the caravan's end. None goeth beyond. In the first desert lie the tracks of mighty travelers outward from Bodrahan, and some returning. And in the second lie only outward tracks, and none return. The third is a desert untrodden by the feet of men. The fourth is the desert of sand, and the fifth is the desert of dust, and the sixth is the desert of stones, and the seventh is the desert of deserts. In the midst of of the last of the deserts that lie beyond Bodrahan, in the center of the desert of deserts, standeth the image that hath been hewn of old out of the living hill, whose name is Ranarada, the eye in the waste. About the base of Ranarada is carved in mystic letters that are vaster than the beds of streams these words, To the God who knows. Now beyond the second desert are no tracks, and there is no water in all the seven deserts that lie beyond Bodrahan. Therefore came no man thither to hew that statue from the living hills, and Ranarada was wrought by the hands of gods. Men tell in Bodrahan where the caravans end, and all the drivers of the camels rest, how once the gods hewed Ranarada from the living hill, hammering all night long beyond the deserts. Moreover, they say, that Ranarada is carved in the likeness of the god Hudrazai, who hath found the secret of Mana Yud Sushai, and knoweth the wherefore of the making of the gods. They say that Hudrazai stands all alone in Pagana and speaks to none, because he knows what is hidden from the gods. Therefore the gods have made his image in a lonely land as one who thinks and is silent, the eye in the waste. They say that Hudrazai had heard the murmurs of Mana Yud Shashai as he muttered to himself and gleaned the meaning and knew and that he was the god of mirth and abundant joy, but became from the moment of his knowing a mirthless god even as his image, which regards the deserts beyond the track of man. But the camel drivers, as they sit and listen to the tales of the old men in the marketplace of Bodrahan at evening, while the camels rest, say, If Hudrazai is so very wise, and yet is sad, let us drink wine, and banish wisdom to the wastes that lie beyond Bodrahan. Therefore is there feasting and laughter all night long in the city where the caravans end. All this the camel drivers tell when the caravans come in from Budrahan, but who shall credit tales that camel drivers have heard from aged men in so remote a city? That is from the gods of Pagana, which you can find in this magnificent book, Lord Dunsany's In the Land of Time and Other Fantasy Tales. So welcome, my friends, welcome to stately Vaughn Manor, where it's the Sunday Penguin. It's the Sunday Penguin once again, where this week we are talking about Lord Dunsany. It's about time I talked about Lord Dunsany because he's so darn important he was. He is so darn important, Lord Dunsany. A fantasist. He created some of the most beautiful fantasy stories in all literature. So Lord Dunsany, who was this fella? Edward John Morton Drax Plunkett, 18th Baron Dunsany, who was born in London in 1878. Uh, and in 1905, he self-published a book called The Gods of Pagana which was a short little book of very short little fantasy stories that told of gods and prophets in a fantasy world, which was created by a god who's sleeping. And it's, this world was created in his dreams. And, you know, one day this god's going to wake up and it's all going to be gone. So he created these very beautiful stories 
and he, he had to pay for the publication of the Gods of Pagana. But once it was published, it became kind of a sensation. There was nothing else like it out there. And from then on, he was able to get all of his fiction published after that. And The Gods of Pagana was followed by many other short collections of short little fantasy stories that read like nothing else and were tremendously influential. So, just as an aside, if you ever find a copy of this, this is fancy, the Fancy Masterworks edition of Time and the Gods by Lord Dunsany. And I recommend this volume because it has complete collections of those initial volumes. This has Time and the Gods, The Sword of, of Welleran, Dreamer's Tales, The Book of Wonder, The Last Book of Wonder. So if you ever find a copy of this, get it. This is probably my favorite Lord Dunsany collection. But this is an excellent volume to introduce you to Lord Dunsany. If you just have never read anything by this author before and are interested in why wouldn't you be, this volume from Penguin is edited by S.T. Joshi. S.T. Joshi, who edited a lot of the horror volumes for for Penguin. He did uh, all three of the Lovecraft volumes that Penguin publishes. He did Clark Ashton Smith, Arthur Mackin, uh, a few other volumes he did for Penguin. So he does a good job with this volume, this Lord Dunsany volume. Lord Dunsany is a writer who changed over time and this volume kind of reflects that. The first part of the volume contains those early fantasy stories that I'm talking about that were so tremendously influential, but then it moves on to some of the other things that he wrote. He was always a fantasist, although he started to write things that were a little bit different. He was also very, he also was popular because of the plays that he wrote. He was, he was an accomplished dramatist, and so he wrote some plays that were also fantasies that, like I said, were very popular. And he also, in the 1920s, moved on from shorter fiction and he started to write some novels. The King of Elfland's Daughter is one of his most popular novels and it's still in print, actually. As far as books in print, from major publishers, not too much. You've got this one from Penguin, Dover has a volume. A lot of Small presses will publish Lord Dunsany. And so you can find Lord Dunsany if you're interested in reading all of his work, you can find it. Particularly if you read ebooks, if you've got an e-reader, all of his stuff is available. Uh, all of his early work is in the public domain. So it's all really easy to find, easy to get, and it's cheap. So if you become really intrigued with Lord Dunsany, yeah, you can read everything. It's all out there. But like I said, this volume is, is really good as an introduction because you have all of those earlier stories. Uh, you have some of his later stories. He, he started to move on from his earlier, fa earlier fantasy work to do some things that were a little more self-aware. Um, he started writing a series of stories about Jorkins, who was an English guy who hung out at a club one of those English, one of those stuffy English clubs where all the all the guys hang out, you know, and drink and tell stories, and Jorkins would tell these extremely tall tales. So they were fantasies, also, but of a of a very different type. Now Dunsany is little read today. Not too many people actually read Dunsany. A lot of people have heard of Dunsany, but mostly through the authors that he influenced. He, he almost certainly influenced J.R.R. Tolkien. I, I don't see how he couldn't. And he was a major influence on H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft idealized Lord Dunsany. When Lord Dunsany went on a speaking tour in America, giving lectures, H.P. Lovecraft showed up to that. Although H.P. Lovecraft was disappointed with Lord Dunsany's later work. He loved his earlier beautiful ethereal fantasy stories. But the later stuff, not so much. Which is not, which is not uh, an unusual opinion. Many people kind of feel that way. 
But one thing about Lord Dunsany is he did write beautifully. Uh, his prose was gorgeous. He seemed very heavily influenced by the King James Bible. It, it very much has that feel as far as how the stories are told. And if you're interested in fantasy at all, you have to read Lord Dunsany. You just have to. He's kind of a must read. And it's an interesting reading experience because it's so different from what fantasy has become. Although it is foundational. Uh, today you will have gigantic, sprawling, massive fantasy stories. Where here you have short, little, dreamlike sketches and, and short stories. Lord Dunsany created this beautiful, lovely world, which was doomed, you know. And you could credit him for being the originator of sword and sorcery with the Sword of Welleran, although it's very different from the sword and sorcery that was developed by Robert E. Howard. Certainly, the sword and sorcery that we know nowadays is more of a Robert E. Howard creation. But you can technically give Lord Dunsany credit for that as well. Truly important foundational figure in fantasy, and this volume from Penguin is an excellent way to get acquainted with this author. And I guess that's all I have to say about Lord Dunsany. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.